Hello, I'm Julie Davis for Blick Art Materials. Thanks for joining us here today. I think everybody loves a handmade basket, don't you? And creating them with students is a great way to illustrate the principles of shape and form in artwork. If you think that making baskets is a complicated and time-consuming process, think again. This technique that I have to show you today makes constructing a basket something very easy to do, even for young children. And when you have less time spent on construction, you have a lot more time for creativity. The samples I brought with me here today have been made with paper coiling core. You may have seen this material before. It's been a staple for basket making for decades now. It's made of a soft absorbent paper, almost like a paper towel, laced together into a rope form with a thin netting. Traditionally, this is used as a core and it's wrapped with fabric, yarn, raffia, or other materials, then stitched together into a basket shape, but today we're going to use it just like this. There are three diameters available. We're going to use a quarter inch coil, which is the smallest size. This is 180 feet. This is how it comes. I would use a piece about 10 to 15 feet long to start out with. That will make a basket that's rather small, like this one here. Now starting the basket is the most difficult part, so I have a helpful little hint that I'm going to show you now. There's a material called print foam. It is adhesive on one side beneath this backing paper right here and a smooth foam on the other. It's meant for beginning printmaking projects. I've cut it down into some very small pieces, about one inch square, and I will start by cutting a disc, a circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now we'll peel off the, the backing paper and expose that strong adhesive right there. Take the end of the coiling core and fold it tightly down against itself like so. Then press that in the middle of the print foam disc. Using pressure, start to coil it around itself and stick to the print foam and that gets you started very quickly and very easily. Now to continue the base we're going to need to have a little bit of glue. The coiling core glues to itself very easily but you need to have a tacky strong glue and I've chosen to use the Sobo here today. Sobo grabs very quickly. Now you could use a white glue. It will take a little bit more time Apply the glue where you're going to put the coil next. You learn to develop a little bit of a rhythm. Glue, stick, hold. There's two very important parts of this basket making process. They are patience as you hold it and wait for the glue to grab and pressure as you hold the pieces together. Okay, that's a good start to the base right there. So let's go up with the basket next. Turn it over, place it down onto the desktop like so, holding it in place, and now we'll start to build the walls up. Build it exactly as you would a clay coil pot. If you put the adhesive right in the center of the coil below, your walls will go up straight. If you apply the heat adhesive to the outside of the coil, your walls will begin to go out. And the same if you apply to the inside, the walls will start to go in. Another very important part that I might point out here is not to use too much of the glue. Use enough that it grabs and holds, but too much glue can cause the coil to slip and slide around and it could also get in the way of your painting later on. All right, now I'm going to set this aside and bring out a finished piece. This piece was done with about 10 feet of coiling core, and you can see the print foam piece down there in the bottom and how the base was begun. Now it's almost finished except for this one edge. To finish off your piece, you could take a pair of scissors, cut the coiling core 
at a diagonal, like so, and then glue this down in place to make it lie flat. You could leave enough paper coiling core on the end to bend it over, glue it to the opposite side, and there we have a nice little basket with handle built in. Another option would be to take the end of it and spread it apart, like so. You can see the paper material inside there. This makes a little flower shape, almost like a morning glory. And this example that I have up here in front shows how it would look painted up. Very pretty. Now what we have is basically a blank canvas. So I have some ideas to run by for painting embellishment. All right. Today I'm going to put some Blick liquid watercolor. It's very, very absorbent. It's brilliant. And it comes in a lot of great different colors. Okay, straight out of the bottle, you can see just how intense the color is here. Colors mix and blend and stick right to that paper coiling core surface. After you've painted the entire basket, I would recommend that you spray a fixative over the top of it, like this Blick Mac fixative. This will make sure that the colors stay put, especially if it's going to be handled quite a bit. I have a few examples here of other ways to embellish. The one we looked at first, of course, has some yarn tassels that have been stitched onto the side of the basket and some colorful uh, wires attached for decoration. I love this example over here. This one has a lid belt to fit onto it. And then the leaves have been stitched onto the basket directly. They're cut out of felt, then embellished even further on the leaves with some more beads and some stitching. Isn't that neat? Okay, you can also add raffia, ribbon, yarn, embellishments like that. Beads could be glued onto the surface or stitched on. Feathers look great on these baskets, especially colorful ones like this. If you would like to use this construction technique to make baskets or bowls in the style of Native American artists, take a look at these examples I have back here. Now these were painted with Blick Acrylic Student Acrylics instead of the watercolor. That way you can brush on some more detailed, precise designs as Native American artists might. So, are you ready to make your own basket? You can print out these instructions for this project at dickblick.com backslash lesson plans if you're not already at our website. And look over a short list of the materials you're going to need. If you're a teacher, we've also listed the national standards for visual arts education there as well. And just a word of warning, have plenty of materials on hand because I know you're going to want to make more than one of these. <laughs>